are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we are back right here at Locked On Spurs. Happy Friday, everybody. I am your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Kins 5 San Antonio. And yeah, I know it's going to be a long off season. You know, the off season is uh, here. The Spurs season ended a couple of days ago uh, in a play in loss to the New Orleans Pelicans. But it's time to look at the uh, big storyline heading into the off season. No, it's it's not if 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 the Spurs are going to bring back Kawhi Leonard. That's a whole other story right now. We'll talk about that with our guest in a few seconds. It is the future of Greg Popovich. Will he or won't he be back? A Spurs great chimed in. Las Vegas is chiming in. Even Popovich chimed in. And also, we're going to be looking at DeJounte Murray. Ah, he's putting the blame on his performance on others rather than himself. We're going to ask if that was appropriate for him to do that or not. I am joined by my fellow uh, colleague over at Ken's Five. He is Casey Vieira, the weekend sports anchor. Casey, we missed you here at Locked On. I know. I feel like it's been a minute since I've been I've been on, right? I know I've been trying. I know I last week I really tried to get you on a couple times, but you, you I know you have um, your hands full sometimes. And you're like you couldn't make it, you couldn't make it. But hey, hey, does it matter? You're here. That's all that matters. I'm here. I'm here. Good to be back. How you I been, appreciate man? it. <laughs> uh, business as usual. I mean, I know yeah. business a little bit different these days. Um, you know, I can only make, I can only make a bi-weekly appearance on lockdown as opposed to a weekly, unfortunately, know, it, I, it I appears not by yeah. intent, but it appears that, that way, but yeah, all is well, all is, you well. know, I've had, I've had some and good some thing tw- is, and the good thing is too, I mean, you know, you're going to, to the, to the listener, they're going to be like, Oh, where's he been? But considering we, we stay in touch pretty frequently, I'm, yeah, I, know. Uh, I don't feel I know. as guilty. So I'm just throwing <laughs> it out there. I know I had a people uh, a couple of people tweet at me like where's Casey or like where's the other guy you know it's like oh, he's busy you know but hey he is back make sure to follow him on Twitter at Casey underscore Vieira and check him out on the weekends on Ken's Five TV holding it down for the all things sports and of course he'll talk about that later on Casey did you see that news about Kawhi Leonard and the Pel- and the which the, one oh yeah exactly with well, the latest right before it hit record yeah. tell me if this sounds familiar. Kawhi mm-hmm. and his camp are having issues with the Clippers regarding the his health status and if he's able to go or not. Sound familiar? It does. <laughs> Here, you know what? I guess it's not as ap- sort of ap- applicable, but I've been feeling like the Zion thing had been taken very much the Kawhi turn. Uh huh. So who do you think plays another game for their team first, Zion or Kawhi? I'm going to go Zion. You think so? It seems yeah. like that that bridge is starting to, I guess, a little, yeah. be mended a little bit more. Yeah, Kawhi, you know, Kawhi's going to do Kawhi. This guy, man, and it, 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 then the national media, uh, at least some of them, not all of them, like drag the Spurs for the way they handled it. It looks like, at the end of the day, this is just a pattern with this kid. Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I've always kind of been a mixed bag with kind of judging on that front because. I mean, the guy is the guy. It was messy how it went out in San Antonio. Oh, yeah, it but was then he ugly. went out, you know, obviously. But then he yeah. went out and he did his thing and he won a championship on his own. So it's like, well, he's do- been doing things his way for however many years now. Won a title less than 12 months after getting moved from the Spurs. Mm-hmm. The Clippers thing has been a little bit weird, uh, I guess you could say. But I mean, hey, like, this is what he is. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's it's very much documented. This is this is what it is. <laughs> uh, you pay you pay for what you get, for better or worse. If Have he's fun, healthy, Clippers. I mean, if he's healthy. It's a if, it, if yeah. he's healthy. Yeah, if the Clippers are a top four team in the West, probably. But instead, I mean, here we are. Here we are. Have fun, Clippers. Um, if you need a uh, shoulder to lean on, uh, maybe Spurs fans will help you out. If not, then he's your problem. Not 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 ours anymore. All right, let's. Enough about that former guy here in San Antonio. Let's talk about somebody who could be a former coach or maybe not. That is uh, Greg Popovich. Season is over, Casey. Popovich just completed his 26th season at the helm in San Antonio. 
Uh, now up in the air, whether he'll be back for his 27th, 73 years old. Uh, he just accomplished two major things left that you know he can argue he could possibly do, which is win a gold medal with Team USA and become the all-time winningest coach in NBA regular season wins, surpassing his uh, buddy and mentor Don Nelson. So the big question is, is he going to be back? Let's get Casey's thoughts first and then uh, hear or at least read what uh, Sean Elliott had to say about it. Uh, Casey, is he back or not? I think so. I do. I think so. Uh, my, my reason for saying that is I, I feel like at the end of this year, this year I think this team kind of kind of established itself as – I, I guess a little bit more of an identity to pop, so to speak, as opposed mm-hmm. to, you know, pop continuously teaching these guys. And, and I know it's, it's continuously, mm-hmm. uh, um, you know, an educating process, but it seemed like for the most part towards the back third of the season, it seemed like the guys were starting to get it. And it, right. and, and it really yeah. seemed like things were starting to click probably faster than even he expected if I was in his shoes, which of course I'm not, but it, it seemed like faster than than he expected that it would be that that started to put things together. And I think for him, I think for him, it's like what else? What else am I going to do right now? If right. if I don't, re- it, it's not like he's going to do TV or anything like that. It's <laughs> clear <imagine>. that. <laughs> oh my god. Like that would be the most hypocritical thing I've ever heard of my, seen in my I life. I swear. I know, <laughs> but but it it's not like it's like, it. It makes it seem again. I'm not in his shoes. No, no, I I know him well enough to to establish these plans. That again, I don't think anybody really does. But but it's kind of like, well, it's basketball. Are you just is he ready to just kind of go into oblivion and then? chill in his place in the dominion and spend weekends in the vineyard in fredericksburg is he ready to do mm-hmm. that for forever i don't know if he is i don't know if he is because i think this team right now it, it it's something obviously it's been something new mm-hmm. but now there it feels like there is something to work with i don't know how good or bad something is but there's at least kind of an identity and a direction that there wasn't really for the past two years or so and another thing that was telling to me, Jeff was watching that post game zoom and for the first time in probably the past two years to year and a half or so after a loss, he had kind of like that, that vibe where it's like, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. I'm disappointed because these guys know better than that. Kind of like back in the day where they'd go out there the big three days and then occasionally just, lose by 20 points or something, something, you know, had an off night and just get run out the gym and pop would kind of give off that vibe in the post game pressers or wherever, like, you know what? I'm not mad at these guys. I'm just disappointed because we're better than that. We're better than like, this is just, it's just embarrassing all the way around, you know, paraphrasing here. And after that Memphis game, or excuse me, after the new Orleans game, that's what it felt like. That was the tone of voice. It was, yeah, you know, we're, we we showed we're young and we reverted. We reverted back to mm-hmm. three quarter, the same thing, three quarters in a row, you know, and, and, and you can't do that. We kept reverting to it. I know the Pelicans played great, but, yeah, we, we kept reverting to that. And those are things we can't do. And it, it was a different, it felt like a really different kind of approach, tone of voice that he was taking to addressing these guys publicly. Because I don't want to say, like, the vibe has been some of these post game pressers where it's just like, Oh yeah, we tried hard. Let's give them a participation trophy because they tried their hardest. You know, I don't want to say to that extent, but it was always just very much kind of a, yeah, they're trying guys. They're getting better, but this is part of the process. Mm -hmm. This sounded like it was okay. Yeah. This is uh, the next step of the process. Take accountability. We can't have nights like this happen. And as a result, I've, for me, when I heard that, I was like, all right, this sounds like a, a guy mm-hmm. who's going to be back. To me, at least. That's what it felt right. like. You know, he was asked about his future uh, in the NBA, you know, whether he's going to come back or not after the uh, game and the media session. And he was told, well, he responded by saying, oh, that was inappropriate to ask. But I kind of disagree. You know, I'm watching on the Zoom and I think it is more than appropriate. I mean, this is a sport related question. You know, for those of you who've never been in a media session, 
they pretty much let you have a uh, a leash as long as you stick to you know the games and you know related to to the sport. But yeah, I mean, I, I disagreed. I think is it's it's more than appropriate to ask because this is the future of the team. The team is in a rebuild. Becky Hammond quietly exited. You know, you look on that uh, bench right now. They can stay within the family. You know, is Mitch Johnson ready? You know, I don't know. You lost Becky Hammond. You know, who who could possibly be next? Um, what did you what did you think about his reaction to that? Saying is inappropriate. I mean, I know you you told me par for the course, but I I disagreed. I thought it was appropriate. Yeah, but just because it's par for the course doesn't mean it was. You know, Pop's response was appropriate. Right. You know. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it was it was a valid question. It was a valid question that was asked because, listen, the man's 73 years old. Anyone who's 73 years old in any sport is going to continuously get asked that question at least some point during the year. It's no indictment on them, but it's just kind of like, well, you're 73 years old. You know, you have, mm-hmm. you have more games behind you than ahead of you. I think part of it was, from Pop's standpoint, I think it was kind of just, I don't want to say heat of the moment because that's very frequently how he is anyways, but from Pop's standpoint, I think it was heat of the moment, and which also might speak to the fact that he was more disappointed than mad at the end of the game. Maybe maybe it was just uh, inappropriate timing versus, you know, inappropriate question. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, I mean, maybe if you have a post-game Zoom or, uh, you know, an end-of-season Zoom kind of thing going on in the next few days and you ask that, he might address that differently. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I know probably the wording wasn't ideal going – I didn't get the clearest listen to it, mm-hmm. but going back and listening to it, I know paraphrasing it was something to the effect of, you know, it was after a Devin Vassell question. I believe, and 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 the reporter asks, "Is you know, are you ready for another go around?" And pops like, "Go, what, what do you mean? What do you mean, like go yeah, around?" I remember that. Yeah, like in, in the context, made it sound like, "Are you want to bring Devin? Like, who are you bringing Devin back for another go around? Like, what's mm-hmm. the deal?" And it's like, "No, you." And I think that wording was probably kind of off put him. Was a little off putting yeah. for him, I should say. So I think that might have been part of it too. But the general over idea, no, the question wasn't out of line. Yeah, the question I, I, wasn't wasn't out of line at all. No. Yeah, I mean, but but it's not just you know reporters asking the question. You and I asking the question right now about his future. Even a player that he coached and won a title with, Sean Elliott, you know, was a guest on San Antonio Sports Star, and I'm during an interview with him, and he was asked that question. You know, hey, you know, what do you think about Pop you know, coming back or not? And interesting response though, and I know you had a reaction to it before you hit the record button here. Uh, Elliot pretty much is bracing uh, for impact, meaning Pop's exit. Now, Elliot made it very clear he doesn't have any source. You know, nobody's told him anything, but he's putting money on the possibility of Pop leaving. You found that interesting, Casey. I did, because I feel like the majority of this season, after after Becky left, after Becky left, in my mind, mm-hmm. it confirmed to me that he's not going anywhere. At right. least for one more year. It confirmed to me that he's not going anywhere for one more year. All indications, every indication that we've seen this year, every question that he's answered, everything he's addressed, nothing, and, and this very much could be him after 30 years of playing poker face over here, knowing knowing what to do here in these kind of situations. It, it never seemed in any capacity that this would be it beyond us speculating over just the fact that he's 73 years old there was no real valid evidence to suggest beyond that that this wouldn't be his last season especially you know when becky left and that's what a lot of people kind of have deemed her as the predecessor but when mm-hmm. she probably saw the way i viewed it is she saw the writing on the wall and she was like listen dude i can't keep passing these opportunities <laughs> i know about to make me about to make me one of the highest paid WNBA coaches of all time. Like, listen, make up your minds here. But he, yeah, I mean, he's probably not, he's probably not revealing that to his, to anybody right now. And, and to a certain degree, I don't blame him. He has that right. Mm-hmm. But I, I, yeah, it, it, it surprised me um, seeing what Sean Elliott said. Uh, I mean, 
he did he did kind of acknowledge that a lot of it was hearsay or, or mm -hmm. what what was your wording there you know, uh, he didn't really have any true insight yeah. into pop's mind but exactly. then again, it's kind of like like nobody really has true insight to pop's mind it seems but I, if there's anyone outside of family who would know it would be former players it'd be long time exactly. players it'd be guys who've been here for along with them for 30 years as well or however many years it's been that sean elliott has <laughs> has been in we're on working for pop in some capacity but i i don't know like i don't yeah you I, know, I, I i feel like everything this year just hasn't suggested be like i said beyond him being 73 years old there hasn't been much to suggest that he would be leaving yeah and and i'm right with you i don't know you know the the, the moment uh pop announced that becky left you know, to me, that cemented it. I mean, I mean, by now, you well, I don't know. I mean, look how tight lipped the Spurs were about Lamarcus Aldridge. You know, it wasn't your usual suspects. You know, your Wojnarowski's, your your whoever's. You know, breaking the news that LMA left. It was Popovich. You know, announcing right. that LMA left. They keep things close to the chest of the vest. Um, but you're, I'm with you. You know, when when Becky, you know, said that she's dipping. You know, and then Pop said that. You know. She's done, you know, then I was like, okay, fine. Cause I don't think they're, I don't think Mitch Johnson is ready. I don't think Matt Nielsen is ready to take over that role yet. Uh, so yeah, my money is going to be on him coming back for one more go. Uh, he'll be what 74 by that time, mm -hmm. you know, 27th, you know, he's, he's, he cemented his space his you know, in the basketball hall of fame, you know, arguably the greatest coach ever in the league. So there's not much more to prove, but if he, if the players after the uh, loss to the Pelicans were talking as if like he was, they did say that he was all in this year, that he was enjoying it, that he, that I think it was Josh Richardson said that all oh, his juices got going again. Um, how much do you think a factor is that he actually coached maybe for the first time in the NBA versus just rolling the ball out and saying, here, here, Timmy, here, Kawhi. Here, Demar, do your thing. <laughs> and that's what it feels like. This is the first time he's actually had to coach. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if I'd go that far, but I guess first time he'd been challenged. Like, yeah. Had faced such a different challenge, maybe in the past, like you, like you said, 20 years or so. Not even 20. Maybe five, probably, really, once Tim left. But yeah, the over, over uh, you know, overly the general idea i kind of agree with that i i remember it was i guess two two years ago now when mm -hmm. when they had remember it was yeah it was 19 1920 season where at the start of the year in november they had a, a road trip it was the east coast road trip and they had dropped like eight games in a row or something like that mm -hmm. an awful start to the season and I remember I had, one of the things I asked him after the game, I made sure to carefully word this. Uh, <laughs> but it, you did. Had, it had the potential <laughs> to be disaster. And, and thankfully yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't disaster. But to, to paraphrase, it was something to the effect of, do you, do you enjoy this new aspect of what you're doing in which it's not a given? You guys aren't the title favorites. You're a bunch of new teams, a bunch of unproven dudes. And and winning is not in the foreseeable future in this year and probably the next couple of years. And, and he, again, paraphrase, he said, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's part of the job. It's, it's, it is something different, but it's part of the job. And you continue to, you know, watch these guys learn and grow. And uh, mm -hmm. this game was in Philly. So this one, Brett Brown was still in the Philly head coach. So he's like, you know, watching guys like Brett Brown continue to, you know, grow in this on the coaching thing. It's it is it is rewarding in that sense. It's mm -hmm. different, but it's it's rewarding. Uh, now, I I guess the the win loss is a, a different story. About it wouldn't indicate that that you're probably getting more reward out of this than actual results, which kind of has been true. But this is mm -hmm. at the point where Pop's career, where he, he's allowed to do that. You know what I mean? And yeah. for him, for him, I'm, I'm I'm just thinking if I was a a deep tactician like like he is in this sport i've proved everything you know i've got my rings i've got my records or yeah. i've got my olympic gold medals let's do something different 
for once. Let, let's do something different. Let's, mm -hmm. let's try to challenge myself again. I haven't, I haven't had to do this literally in 20 years. No, right. actually, no, pretty much ever. Because when he's doing that 20 years ago, he's still got two yeah. all world talents there on the bench mm -hmm. and Duncan and, and Duncan and, and, uh, and Robinson. Robinson. So really, yeah. E yeah. So really ever, he's never, he's never had to do this. And yeah. for him, I think there's probably a degree of, of it being challenging and refreshing. And, and I think also that's probably why you don't see him as, as flustered and as, as mm -hmm. worked up sometimes after some of these losses, because like, Hey, this is what I signed up for. Yeah, I gotta pay. I gotta be patient with these dudes. It's part Absolutely. of it. I'm not gonna go out there and, re and and just tear these dudes up for no reason. Mm -hmm. I knew what I was getting into, so this is part of a different process. And I think We're that's part of the reason we'll be back because I think he's enjoying it. I think he's enjoying yeah. this new process. Yeah, um, yeah, he's definitely enjoying it. He's a different person with uh, the media. I'm pretty sure you noticed that, uh, uh, Casey. This past season, a lot more patient and willing to uh, ask ask some questions. It's just it just invigorated him and. It, it, the way he's with you know with the media, it reminded me of his early days in San Antonio. Uh, he was very similar to what he was now, you know, I, maybe less. Uh, but I, I think he understands that it's a new generation, it's a new set of Spurs. It's it's they don't have a Timmy, they don't have a Kawhi, they don't have a Demar, they don't have a Tony Parker or a Manu. You know, the closest they have is Dejounte, which we'll talk about him in a while. Uh, but yeah, it is a new time. But you know. We're going to get into what Vegas thinks about Pop's future. We know about Vegas, Casey. You know, if they say something, more than likely is true. So, but hey, if you want to get down on some action on those odds that we're going to talk about in a bit, you want to go to betonline.net. It is your number one source for all betting stats and sports info. They already have the futures out. Popovich's uh, coaching future is there. If you want to put some money on it, uh, go to betonline.net. You can find all the latest sports development, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the MLB season. Look, BetOnline is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information from live betting to playoff esports, which I love, and much, much more. So you want to head to the website today. Look, you got a computer. You got a cell phone in your pocket. It's so easy. BetOnline.net. Uh, to learn more about the trends and action. Again, you know, they, they have betting odds on who the NBA MVP. Texas believes that it's going to be Luka Doncic. Do you agree? You want to put some money down on that? Again, betonline.net. BetOnline, where the game starts. We're talking with KC Vieira. He's with Ken's Five, San Antonio, the weekend sports anchor. And make sure to check him out every Saturday. Instead of you do Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or just Saturday and Sunday? I go Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Oh, you Sunday go now. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Oh, yeah. look at you. Move it on up, big mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm pretty sure he'll get into what Sean had to say uh, over the weekend. When you do that, just make sure you give me a shout out, Casey. Oh, give me yeah. a shout out. We'll give you, give you a <laughs> shout out. You didn't stop. It wasn't your interview. Get out of here. Get out of here uh, with that. Hey, um, uh, I know you're a betting man. Let's get into what... Um, Vegas has say about. <laughs> you strike not me as all. somebody who's a Vegas guy that puts money down on some future props or something like that. I'm a Vegas, I'm a Vegas guy, but I, if I lose 20 bucks, I'm like, man, devastated. You know yeah, I'm like, I can't do this no more. I'll go out there, I'll drop like 60 bucks on a dinner for one Vegas. That's how much it costs for one person to make 60 bucks. I'm like, ah, whatever, but I, I, I lose 20. Apparently that's the line right there. Oh yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. Or or you and your wife go out and like, okay, hundred dollar tickets for a, a, a Vegas show, twenty bucks on roulette. Ah, I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, suddenly there's a line I don't cross at that point. <laughs> All right, Anyways. let's get it. Let, well, let's get into what Vegas has to say about Pop's future. All right, it's from uh, Bet Online. Uh, will he retire? Right now. The odds on that being yes at one to one odds, which is a plus 100. Now it's kind of close here. Will he not retire? The Vegas is giving five to seven odds a minus 140. So the odds are tipping that he will come back. It's not that much of a gap, though. It's not like it's overwhelmingly, like, oh, he'll be back here, you know, plus 200, you know, uh, I'm sorry, I'm uh, minus, you know, 500, nothing like that. Um, Vegas seems to be it's nearly 50 50. Why do you think that? 
I, I think... Is it the age? Is it that he has accomplished everything yeah. he's done already? Yeah, I, I, I think that's pretty much what it is. I, I think... I was going to say Vegas isn't as much in the know as the people around who, who follow mm-hmm. this team, the, you know, the, the reporters and the, the people who are with this team every mm-hmm. single day. They don't know that. But honestly, Vegas has a, a way of figuring it. And I don't know how they, they do. do it. They, they have know. a way of, of doing it. Yeah, right? Like, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how they do it. They're usually in the ballpark. And I yeah. guess when you, when you think about it, the 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 counterpoint to my argument is is that he is yeah he is 73 years old and and Mm -hmm. even though i'm saying that that that's the only evidence that would suggest it i mean let's be real like i said 73 years old this 73 (laughs) 73 (laughs) years old i i i don't know beyond that beyond that i don't know how overly educated i am to add much to it I haven't already said, right? But that is a little bit tighter than I thought. Yeah, that that's that that's is a little now, bit tighter than I thought. Yeah, obviously things change, you know, as a, as the off season will go on. But yeah, those are the uh, the early odds, and it's very close. But yeah, at the end of the day, I agree with you, Casey. I think uh, Pop will be back. If you know how they say, like, oh, there's nothing more for him to prove. Maybe for him, the last thing to prove, quote unquote, is he can at least get these clo- get these uh, kids close to making the playoffs, not the play in. Mm-hmm. This is already back to back seasons they made the play in, so progress. You know that's something. You know a little progress there. Uh, but mm-hmm. then again, you look at like this is the, this was the worst record in Popovich's coaching history. Um, it's been a while since they were this bad record wise. This mm-hmm. was also what. The fifth season, fifth, sixth season straight of no playoffs. And um, yeah, maybe that for him is a challenge to get these kids as close as possible to the uh, playoffs. I know they want it. They 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 were upset after the uh, loss of the Pelicans. By the way, what did you think about that loss of the Pelicans? It, it was just got ugly quick. Yeah, but then it also got reasonable quick at the end. Yeah. I, I, I actually, I thought the Spurs were going to win that game. I thought they were going to win going into it, and then yeah, just kind of the way that, just kind of the way that games have gone this year is that they're never for a team that, well, what were they one in thirty one after losing after after three mm-hmm. or something yeah. like that, right? Was yeah, that the was, number? It, something yeah. stupid. It, yeah, and fourteen games under five hundred. They made an awful lot of those games really interesting, and yeah, I mean, I felt good. I was, I was like, yeah, New Orleans probably a better team, but. These are a lot of guys that are in a very unfamiliar spot as well. Most mm-hmm. of these guys haven't been in this spot as well. So, so it, it played out. I thought the game largely that it that I expected, except I expected the result to be a little bit different. I I did not expect Dejounte Murray to play as miserably mm-hmm. as he did. Yeah, I did not do that. Um, I did not expect that. I don't know what that really tells you besides what we're seeing on Twitter <laughs> or what we've seen on Twitter in yeah. the past couple of days and that a lot of people are speculating as to whether or not he is the guy to lead a team, myself included. I'm not that was not exactly the the best receipt to provide the mm-hmm. argument that he would be. But I, I yeah, it, it that was tough because the, the Pelican game it was tough because this is a team at the end of the day that is a 34 win team without the play-in we're totally viewing this season entirely differently because Mm -hmm. at the end of the day i mean this was a below average basketball team and and just kind of by default they were playing relevant basketball and that's to no fault of their own Uh, you whatever whatever way you get there if you get there you get there and 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 they did do that Mm -hmm. so largely though I, i mean i felt okay after it i felt okay yeah, yeah. I it, mean, it, it, look, look. If you know, bright side. Hey, you know, the playoff. I mean, the uh, draft odds. You know, didn't really take a plummet. You know, because that 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 was on the table. Had they survived the play-in, the draft odds would have just plummeted. They would have been really out outside of top ten. Now they still have a really good shot of landing in the top ten. I think they had like a twenty percent shot, something like that. Something so, like that. Yeah, so they'll be good. Hey, you know, you, you mentioned the game. Let's just go ahead and talk about that. You know, DeJounte Murray, I guess the aftermath of the uh, game, you know, all eyes were on him. He is the leader. He is the all-star. You know, he's Mr. Triple-Double. 
you know, he's he's going to have a good game. You know, he's going to show us what he's got. And he didn't. He came up short, saddled with foul trouble early. He picked up three at, at, right and going into the halftime and an awful shooting night. Uh, I think it was like five for 19 for the field uh, was just really, really letting the uh, refs get into his head to the point of that. He didn't hide it. Casey, uh, if you want to mm-hmm. hear what um, I'm mean, going to read, what Murray had to say afterwards, uh, we'll let you know right now. Kinsfine.com slash Spurs. Um, Murray went to his Instagram and blamed it all on the refs. Pretty much blamed all the refs that it was the refs that called uh, these um, these ticky tack fouls. It was the refs that had him sit for most of the games. That it was the refs that are taking away the the letting the stars not be the stars, as he said. Yeah, you know, I, for me, I read that. I was like, okay, I get it. You're frustrated. You know, you wanted to. You're a pro athlete. I get all that competitive juice. But come on, man. Come on. My first that thought was, was like, you know what? You should have kept that to yourself, DeJounte. That was the worst possible thing he could have said in that situation. The worst possible thing he could have said in that situation. When you go out there and you shoot five of 19 and not to mention not to mention some of those things he's not exactly correct about either because that second quarter when he picks up that shooting foul 90 seconds into the second quarter that for foul number three that's a foul like mm-hmm. well, what? that is a foul <laughs> that's the, the one what, what what am i missing here i've been watching basketball 32 years of my life in any level any sport what he did that was a foul that's not a product of bad officiating that was just not a smart play that was not that was a foul so as a result you're sitting there for the last 10 and a half minutes of the quarter of the second quarter and the deflection the the the, the blame suddenly deflects to poorly officiating play i was like what what (laughs) <laughs> you know, like what, what am I missing here? No officiating is perfect, but there's a sense of accountability on that front. When, mm-hmm. when you, you know, what player is not critical of officiating at, officiating at the end of the day? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. every player is critical of officiating and unless it's like something super egregious, which by yeah. me looking at that game, and I think you as well, there was nothing in that game that was super egregious, right? I, I didn't think so. I thought by NBA standards, I thought that was a, you know, a reasonably officiated game. In, in my, in my opinion, I, I don't, that, that, that was the worst thing you could say because he played so poorly. Bad. Like, yeah. he, he was awful. He was awful. And the only thing, and, and he did touch on it a little bit in the zoom. And I think a lot of people would have been okay if he left it at it and, and didn't, get to the, the the officiating side of things it was like just take the l and move on thank you yeah. you know it's like just take and he the did l that and, move on. and he did that post game he did that i mean mm-hmm. to his credit he did say that he had a, he admitted that he had a bad shooting night he admitted that uh you know it wasn't the best of his game he admitted that he's upset that this team wasn't in the playoffs or at least had survived the play in but yeah, you don't turn around and then start uh, pointing fingers, you know, because to me, you know, a sign of a leader is somebody who's not going to blame somebody else, you know, unless it's egregious, unless it's just majorly egregious, you know. But in this case, it was also even. Didn't B.I. get in foul trouble, too? It wasn't like they were just yeah. picking on on DeJounte yeah. reps. You know, B.I. got it, too. And look, B.I. is already you know, probably maybe a little bit above par than – DeJounte. But but here's the here's Go the ahead. thing though, and and I get I get his point. He's saying they're calling too many fouls, mm-hmm. which you can make that case. But it's kind of like in baseball, where certain umpires call their strike zones differently. Some mm-hmm. call it looser. Some call it tighter. Some will give you that high pitch. Some won't won't give you that high. Some won't do that. That's the type of thing you have to adapt to. And while they were calling the game a little bit tighter at least it was consistent it's not consistent it it wasn't to the point where it was disadvantageous to one team or another if they're calling the game tighter both ways around sure what you know okay what's the and they were and they were they were they were yeah they were were. 
So what's the what's the issue here? This is this is part of it. You have to adapt to the officiating. And unless there's something overly just offensively miserable that they missed, that's not like like what you can't blame the officiating for it. Because while you might not agree with it, it was consistent. And largely that's when 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 it comes to officiating, above all else, you want accuracy and you want consistency, right? Mm -hmm. And for the most part, they had that. It stayed kind of a level playing field for both teams all the way around. So yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. I, hey, look, it, you know the price. What's the what's the price out of this? You know, I think all in all, it's it's bad. It's a bad look on Dejounte. You notice how he put it on his Instagram uh, story, so they expire after 24 hours. So he's like, "What are you talking about? I never said it." Yeah, I know, but I took a screen grab of it, so I got it. I was gonna say, unfortunately, he's a public figure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know, the bright side of this. Okay, fine. You know, I look at it as. If you're that pissed off, Dejounte, then use it as as the great uh, Bobby Boucher would say, tackling fuel. You know, just use it as fuel moving forward. Just fuel you, get yourself angry. You're pissed off in the off season, and also too, you know, I had a chance to speak with uh, Evan uh, Wash of the NBA. He's like the director of you know competition and strategy and stuff, and he he's heading the play in, and he told me that the Spurs have had conversations with him about how they don't see the play in as like, you know, a, like a playoff kind of thing. You know, they just see it as a developmental tool. So then, Hey, you got yourself a lesson DeJounte, that refs call things differently in a heated game refs, you know, are, you know, quick to blow the whistle and probably more so in the, than the regular season learn that. Also learn not to let it, let the refs get to you. And it wasn't just DeJounte. Did you notice Keldon was really getting impacted by the refs too? I mean, I've never seen them that vocal with refs until that game versus the Pelicans, Casey. They they showed their youth, and Pop even said it. Yeah. They showed their youth. They showed they showed they showed that they weren't ready for three quarters of that of that spotlight. That there's so mm -hmm. many aspects of the intensity. It showed that they weren't ready for it. I feel comfortable saying that because that's what Pop said. That mm -hmm. they, there was there was aspects of that game when it came to that front, they showed their youth, and that's really a big one. I mean, Keldon, Keldon exactly. Dejounte takes the heat, but Keldon shot six of twenty-two, mm -hmm. six of twenty as yeah. well. Not when, when your when your top two players on San Antonio squad do not show up, and the top three players for the Pelicans go ballistic on you, yeah, that's it's going to make for a long night. You know, Devin Vassell, though, credit him. You know, he did his best to keep the team within striking distance. But, mm -hmm. you know, going back to DeJounte, yeah, um, bad luck. Uh, you know, hopefully, you know, he'll come back with a vengeance next season, get mad, get get angry. But maybe the lesson here, too, for, for him to kind of just take the L. Just take the L, mm -hmm. move on, and uh, zip it. We're here with uh, Casey Vieira. He's with Ken's Five TV. Make sure to follow him on Twitter at Casey underscore Vieira. Now, before uh, Casey tells you everything about what's going on in his neck of the woods, so we're going to be talking about Built Bar. Look, I love Built Bar. I go through boxes of them monthly. They are so good. And look, if you've given up on your New Year's resolution and you want to get back on track, stick to eating right. Well, you can thank Bilt Bar. It almost feels like you're not really uh, having a, sol a resolution because you'll actually enjoy uh, eating them. They got a puff flavor now. It's like a protein-infused marshmallow. It's puffy, marshmallowy, but it's a protein bar. It's a treat. It's covered in chocolate. Now, those puffs come in flavors such as churro, uh, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie. They're very good. They're going to be your new favorite. Bilt Bars, or all of them are, covered in 100% chocolate. Even in the puffs, and yeah, 100% real chocolate. Low calorie, high protein. Replace your candy bars with these, they're better. You don't want a candy bar, they could be anywhere from up to two to 300 calories. Go get yourself Built Bar right now. Go to built.com, go look at the macros chart. You'd be blown away. High protein, low carb. Most bars contain 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, four grams of protein. Compare that to a daily candy bar, which is about 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar. You don't want that. Get that out of there. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and new for this month, white chocolate cookies and cream. They're all delicious. New flavors coming out all the time. 
you know, you'll you'll definitely discover your new favorite flavor by uh, ordering yourself a box of Built Bars, and they're good for you too. They're all about the taste. They make taste delicious first, and then make it healthy for you. Go to built.com, use promo code LOCK15, get 15% off your order, promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. And look, this episode is also brought to you by Rock Auto. With the amazing uh, selection they got at Rock Auto, you cannot ever say you did not find your uh, part that you need uh, for your make or model over at rockauto.com. You got computers, go to rockauto.com. You got a cell phone, go to rockauto.com. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Don't go spending up to 30, 50%, 100% more for the same uh, part from chain store or car dealership. It's been serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. The prices are reliably low for every single customer at Rock Auto. They got brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, new carpet, everything you can imagine. And you can explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution for your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now. See other parts available for your car or truck, right? Locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Box? So they know that we sent you. An amazing selection of reliably low prices. All the parts your car will ever need. Rockauto.com. Let's get back to it with Casey Vieira, my colleague at Ken's 5 TV. Casey, all in all, you look back at this season, I guess you could say it was a success. All in all, it was, they, I think they exceeded uh, expectations. It was the best case, real, best yeah. case, realistic scenario. Best case, because they figured out who was worth investing in. They played relevant basketball in April. They, whether he's a uh, right. true, whether whether he's a true all star or a complimentary supporting cast all star, they did find an all star in this process, and in all likelihood, they're going to get a top ten pick. I mm-hmm. mean, yeah. t- tell me, tell me what's wrong about this season? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, right. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, they they got. I mean, if they wanted to develop their players, oh, they definitely got that. If they wanted to throw out, I mean, Casey Pop threw out a nineteen year old kid as a starter for thirteen straight games. It's, and in a play in a, and in a playoff game. Yeah, and and yeah, yeah, and in the play in game. That is, I mean, for a Popovich in his era, for that to happen, unheard of. But he had no choice. He had to throw him out there. And 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 I think that that experience is gonna bode well for him moving forward. It was a good season. You know, yes, they missed the playoffs. Uh, yes, they got bounced in the play-in again. But this is this is part of a rebuild, kids. This is what it looks like. Did it? I didn't Memphis go through this too? I mean, Memphis went through, uh, I think a couple mm-hmm. of play ins before they broke through, but then again, I mean, no, I get it. They got a guy named John Morant, but I mean, that helps a lot. But still, you know, this is the Spurs, um, going through a rebuild, and we'll see what the future holds. You know, this offseason is going to be very interesting on uh, tons of money, draft capital. Casey, do I dare say players you can still flip? Is that still on the table for oh, Casey absolutely. Vieira? So you're absolutely. still okay. Yep. Who, Absolutely. Who, who are your flippable players right now? Is it it's still everybody, or has that changed now that the season's over? Well, everybody, I think, is still movable okay. because I think there's only, what, maybe like eight untradeable guys, truly, mm-hmm. truly untradable guys in the NBA. I yeah. think everybody can be moved. Uh, mm-hmm. I guess expanding that thought a little bit, I think everybody, everybody is, is, Everybody can be traded, but I wouldn't necessarily put everybody on the table. I think mm-hmm. that's the best way to probably phrase that. Yeah. Yeah. That or they're just going to be uh, a very um, big sticker price on them if um, they mm-hmm. want to move them. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. But we're done talking. We want to hear from you. What do you think about uh, Pop's future in the NBA slash San Antonio? Vegas says uh, the odds are leaning towards him staying. Casey and I think he's going to be back. But do you disagree? You let him know at Casey underscore Vieira. Me, Jeff, G Spurs zone. And what do you think about DeJounte's comment blaming the refs for taking him out of the game? Bad look or let him talk? Are you those kids that, you know, you're these kids now. They always say, let uh, talk your talk your mess, talk your mess. You know, Casey. Got him, old Casey. But... <laughs> I see it, so I'm trying to keep up with these kids. But there's some kids that say, "Yeah, talk." You know, do you agree or disagree with Dejounte? What he had to say, Casey? What is going on over Kent's five? What you got cooking uh, on the weekend? 
Oh man, basketball season's over. It sucks, right? Yeah, it does. But, but, but football's around was, the corner. I was just gonna say. Yeah, we got UTSA coming up right around the corner here to keep us entertained, and uh, some other things in between. And then we have the draft coming up and free agency, and we're right back to uh, basketball again. So yeah, basketball yeah, never sleeps on the weekends. Basketball, no, basketball never, never sleeps. sleeps. It never, especially does, with yeah. the on Spurs Twitter. Never exactly. <laughs> exactly. There's right now, there's something to talk about. Right now, it's, it's going ballistic about Kawhi Leonard uh, pulling a Kawhi Leonard again with the Clippers. So go check out all mm-hmm. that fun over there on Twitter. But yes, for Casey Vieira, I am Jeff Garcia. We're gonna put a lock on this episode of Lockdown Spurs. <laughs>